Welcome everyone to the Girlfriend Doctor Show. I'm really excited about this episode because there is so much that we have to talk about when it comes to men's sexual health and it really is a tender issue. I mean, from the point of when a woman and a man are dealing with this drop off in intimacy, a decrease in sexual function, from how do we deal with that? How do we approach it, approach it with each other? That's an issue, right? And how do we restore sexual function and intimacy? So today we're going to be talking about men's sexual health. I ask you all the time, you know, you know that you can ask or tell me anything. Well, one of our girlfriends and our, our members in our Girlfriend Doctor Club posted in our clubhouse, beautiful, brave Lois, and she says, you know, Dr. Anna, you say that I can ask and tell you anything. So here goes. She goes, first of all, now that my lady parts have rejoined the happiness it deserves and our our intimacy, her and her husband's intimacy has improved 100%. Like, thank you, Jolva, right? Very, real good there. She goes, this is a question about his male parts. Years ago, we tried the blue pill, and while it worked sufficiently, it bothered him enough to not really want to use it. And I agree. My husband is 61 and in excellent health. He could lose a few pounds, but we are working on that too. What our main hope is to find a more natural way to his, improve his, ahem, may I say it, erection. He does have the typical prostate stuff going on for a man of his age, so I'm sure that is the main culprit. She goes, all right, I put it out there, man that took courage and vulnerability, but he was all in for asking for a solution. So this is an issue that affects many, many couples and certainly uh, many marriages and can lead to a drop of intimacy. So to address this really tender issue and male sexual function, I have a dear friend, a longtime colleague, a gentleman I met in early 2000, who is literally a billboard sensation. I'm telling you, he has um, broken all stereotypes when it comes to, you in a regenerative medicine. He's been a leader in anti-aging medicine and on the forefront of men's sexual health on cover of men's magazines and also three times New York Times best-selling author, Dr. Jeffrey Life. He is known in his um, before and after photos, you may have seen him, in his mid-50s at age 57. We'll share this picture up of, of Jeff. And, you know, we lovingly say he was a heart attack waiting to happen. He wholeheartedly agrees. He had diabetes, was short of breath, walking up a flight of stairs. And as a physician and an expert in his field, he's like, I, I can't live this way. And now you see him in his 80s, just looking amazing, looking awesome, and setting a very high bar for all men out there. You guys, bring in your guy. Bring him in now. Pen, paper handy. You want to take notes. You want to listen to this conversation. Welcome, Dr. Jeffrey Life. Good to have you here on my couch virtually. I wish we were in person. Good to see you. Thank you, Anna. Great to be here. Always great seeing you. Well, I, I know you deal with you deal with this and you've dealt with men's sexual health for decades. And this issue that Lois writes in about, her and her husband having issues with sexual function, erectile function, from a men's perspective, I mean, there is so much that we can do about it, correct? Well, there is a lot you can do about it. And this happens not only to 60-year-olds and 70 and 80-year-olds, but it also happens to 30-year-olds probably some 20 year olds as well. And, you know, the first thing that I always think about when someone com develops ED is vascular disease. So the, the absolute first thing that needs to be ruled out is blood vessel disease, because, you know, the arteries to the penis are, are small arteries and they get blocked up before the arteries to the heart and brain get blocked up from atherosclerosis. So ED can be a precursor to a heart attack and stroke down the road five to 10 years later. I think that's so, a really important point to emphasize because like erectile dysfunction is a symptom often of, of vascular disease, heart disease, you know, diabetes, it's a symptom. And so not to just give Viagra, right? Well, yeah, Vi Viagra or the other ED drugs, I, Cialis, I like that. But first, you got to be sure that this is not a result of vascular disease. Um, and uh, so you need to make really sure 
that you don't have uh, ongoing uh, evidence that you're headed down this path of a heart attack or stroke, which, by the way, kills more men and women in this country than any other disease. So it's a huge problem. And so ED can be the first warning sign. That so when you is, say look is, for look for vascular disease, ultrasound, lab work. Well, yeah, you, you, the problem with vascular disease in America is it's, we, we basically have a wait until something bad happens. Um, and so what I do and what a lot of people that do what I do uh, are all about is detecting vascular disease early and then stepping in and doing a lot of things to change that course. And that, that's, that's really what the central part of my practice is all about. And I'm living proof that it can be changed because when I was, as Anna was saying, early on in my late mid to late 50s, I was in horrible shape and I ended up having uh, va vascular disease. I had heart disease and I've been able to turn this all around through lifestyle and through the right supplements and in some cases pr prescription drugs. So step number one with erectile dysfunction, and, and again, you are a role model and such an expert in this area. So step number one, rule out vascular disease. Correct. And then once that's ruled out, then uh, Viagra is a really good drug. I think Cialis actually does a better job. It's longer lasting and you can actually take Cialis, low dose Cialis every day, which will improve the blood supply to your penis, but also to every, everywhere else in your body, to your brain and your heart. And so I, I think it's a win-win across the board. Um, about low dose Cialis, that's the five milligram daily dose. Whether it comes in two and a half or five, I, I think five is the, the optimal low dose way to do this. Mm -hmm. And then you can always up that dose if, if you know you're going to be sexually active two or three hours later, you know. So it's, it's, it's an amazing drug. And the other thing is, is not to give up, right? So besides like when you were 57 and you're like, okay, I'm gonna turn this around. I'm having vascular disease, you know, you know, if, uh, sexual health issues, you know, the pre-diabetes or diabetes, early diabetes, you, you know, what were your steps and what do you now do with your patients? Well, my blood pressure was high. So I've worked hard to get my blood pressure down that has actually required medication as well. Blood pressures in the morning for men and women should be in the one teens over the 70s or even upper 60s. And it's really important that people uh, manage their, their blood pressures well. Uh, it's, it's a silent killer. It's, it's a silent cause of ED. It's a silent cause of heart attacks and strokes. And so people need to know what their blood pressures are. And the best time is in the morning when you get up, you sit down and you relax for five minutes and then, then you get your blood pressure checked. Yeah, I, I agree. And so optimizing that. And then you went on a, um, you went on a physical fitness regimen. And certainly nutrition is huge in your practice. That's one of the tenets, nutrition, exercise, and hormones are um, some three core philosophies, as well as supplementation. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, you went on to win the Body for Life competition. I did that at the age just before I turned 60, and that just really changed my life. I transformed myself from this fat guy to a, re to a really fit, lean guy. It took me uh, about nine months, and I've been able to keep it that way, but it's uh, it's always a struggle, you know, Ex being on an exercise program, consistent exercise program and eating program re requires a lot of discipline. And so I, I teach my patients what to do if they get off track or if, and how to get back on track really fast. So exercise is a crucial part of, of, of avoiding ED or getting on top of ED and re re returning your function and it's a combination of resistance training which is lifting weights 
and then cardio, which is getting your heart rate up to a level that really exercises your heart and lungs. And people need to get 150, at least 150 minutes of cardio in a week. And then weightlifting can be an hour, maybe three or four times a week. And that's what I, I do. That's what I've been doing since, since I was in my late 50s. It really works. Yeah, and a good example of that. And I remember in a, one of our earlier conversations, and I think we, we have a special on with you in men's sexual health in our sexual CPR program. And I believe you told me that you'll get on your bike and, and watch the you know latest episode of a movie that you just love. And you won't watch it unless you're riding your bike. That's how I've been able to, to keep consistent with my cardio. Uh, I love that. I, I learned a long time ago that uh, if I watch a, an action DVD, that it takes my mind off how many hills I have to go through on, uh, on my exercise bike. So I watch action DVDs. I download the whole, whole season. And each of these is 45 minutes long, almost always. And so I, I ride my bike for 45 minutes and then I add a five minute cool down. And that's an easy way to get in 150 minutes a week of cardio. Mm -hmm. And it's really, I'm alive today because of my exercise bikes. And, and all of that. Yeah. And your weight bearing exercises, your muscle, you know, really focusing on pushing, pushing your strength exercises as well. That's right. Resistance training is really important. You know, people, men and women will lose muscle mass as they age. And that actually has a, a term called sarcopenia, a medical term. And there are a lot of scientists that believe sarcopenia is an absolute. You can't avoid it. And that's absolutely not true. So I have been able to maintain or actually increase my muscle mass as I've gotten older. And today at age 82, I have as much muscle mass or a little more than I had when I was in my 60s and 50s. And I have a whole lot more muscle mass than I had when I was in my 30s and 40s. That's and my awesome. strength has not gone down either. And so it, it, people must do strength training as they age. The older you get, the more important it is that you do these. The, the right amount of cardio and the right amount of strength training. I agree. And sometimes a friend told me once, you've got to earn your walks and your yoga class. You've got to lift some weights, do some squats, pick up some. Like, and, and back in the Navy, when I used to work there, they called it pumping pig because the old weights were pig iron, right? So yeah. like you, you have to have to do that. And the other thing you always say, so, okay, so we're going to focus on nutrition. Our audience knows keto green for men, keto green for women. You're a big proponent of very healthy, balanced, low carbohydrate, healthy, high quality protein, healthy fat diet for men. And, um, and then they're going to weight bear, strength train, and do their cardio. And they are going to rule out cardiovascular disease, get this optimized. And one thing you always say, too, is a flexible man uh, is a sexual man. And I said that to a friend the other day, and he goes, do you mean a rigid man is a sexual man? I'm like, no. <laughs> and I, I learned that from my Pilates instructor. I, I saw uh, her doing in another adjoining room from the gym, I saw her putting uh, one of her clients through uh, exercises that on these machines. And I thought, I wonder what this is all about. So after she finished, I asked her and she told me, this is Pilates, started by Joseph Pilates back in the early 1900s. She said, why don't you come in tomorrow, Dr. Life, and I'll give you a free lesson. So I showed up and she starts putting me through all these different things. And it was all about stretching and flexibility. And I said, you know, this is really about stretching and flexibility. And she says, that's ex absolutely right. She said, Dr. Life, a flexible man is a sexual man. She had you for life at that point. <laughs> I signed up and I've been doing Pilates ever since. I love that. All right. So we're going to write, you're a physician and or your patient comes in, 61-year-old spouse of our dear friend Lois, and we've ruled out cardiovascular disease, optimized his blood pressure. He's doing keto green. He's losing weight. We've got him in the gym. Now, what are you going to prescribe? Looking at his hormones and supplements, um, well, What's on that prescription men, pad? His testosterone level is probably declining. You know, men's testosterone level 
gradually declines starting about age 35. And so they, they go through andropause, which is different than menopause. It's the same outcome, but menopause happens pretty abruptly. And women can, as you all know, can tell you almost to the month when this all, when the change started. Well, with andropause, it creeps into a guy's life. It's very insidious and very subtle. And they start noticing that they're gaining fat, a lot of belly fat. They start noticing that their sex drive is declining. They start noticing problems like ED. They just can't get it up like they used to. And they think this is because of their age. And they'll go to their doctor and they'll say, and the patient will say, you know, I, I really would like to know what my testosterone level is. I've heard that low T can cause all this. And so the doctor, in some cases reluctantly, will order a blood test and that test will come back and he, and the doctor will say, well, you know, Joe, you, your test is normal. You are normal. Well, what the Do doctor we doesn't be normal? tell no. is that he's a D student when it comes to his testosterone, his testosterone level, maybe, maybe a D minus student. Mm -hmm. Now who wants to go through their life being a D or D minus student? So if this particular patient were to go on testosterone and get his level up to where it should be, like in the upper, uh, close to 1,000, 800, 900, it would completely change everything for him. He would enjoy exercising. He would be back to having a strong libido. His erectile performance would improve dramatically. Uh, his his uh, sense of well-being would come back, and it changes everything. And that's that's a big part of what I do. And more and more doctors are doing this, but it's taken 15 or 20 years before uh, the, the medical profession has begun, but begun to accept this as a proper way to care for their aging male population have an age limit yeah. on that do you have an age limit where you're like nope you don't get testosterone no age limit. and i want to say too with you emphasize the um you know 800 900 you know up to a thousand range versus 1200 1300 1800 that some clinics are pushing their clients towards and i'm, I'm at that 600 to 900 optimal range depending on where that testosterone is going and and i think that's it's important to look at because it will convert to estrogen convert to dihydrotestosterone so keeping that healthy testosterone level i agree is is paramount for well-being and also recognizing though physiology drives behavior testosterone can cause increase in dopamine seeking or novelty seeking behaviors if it's too high as well as agitation and angry so we don't want affairs we don't want fights we want loving healthy happy men exactly so we're going to prescribe some testosterone typically are you doing injections that's, that's what i do i do injections i think that's far superior to creams and gels and patches and and also pellets uh, i have my patients inject once or twice a, a week and it just works well we get to level up to where it should be and i i'm i don't shoot for a certain number i i really go by how they're feeling and men, men with low testosterone levels like in the 200s or even hundreds or even low 300s will improve dramatically with testosterone injections. It's it's dramatic. Yes. And, and it just changes their lives almost within a week or two. And then I continue to monitor them uh, on a regular basis to make sure that, that their levels are, are, are where I want them. Okay. And that's, that's a big part of what I do. And, and you know, there's a really a, a huge benefits to this. First of all, it reduces men's risk for prostate cancer. Reduces, does not increase the risk of prostate cancer. Secondly, it reduces men's risk for heart attack or stroke. Does not increase their risk for a heart attack or stroke. And so we've learned this over the last 10 to 15 years. Healthy testosterone levels are important for healthy aging 
and, and for avoiding all of the age-related diseases. And so it's a win-win. It truly is. One of the I, few things that we can fix. It's a win-win. I agree 100%, and, and you do it in a very logical way. I appreciate that. We're going to come right back and talk about premature ejaculation. So I want to hit this topic with you. And as we wrapped up erectile dysfunction, I mean, I think there, there are so many things. So we have the testosterone, the exercise, right? The um, cardio, all of that, that it can turn around. We can just level that up and see an improvement in erectile dysfunction. Now, I've used, and we have some men's sexual health packets. Really, it's heart health packets, because, right, help the heart Heart, help the vascular, help the blood, you know, your, your vascular system, you're helping the penis, to be honest, right? Help the heart, help the penis. It's all connected. Yeah. So, so we've got that there. And, um, and with that, we use some supplement like our Mighty Maca Plus so that, you know, support the adrenal glands and detox, support detox in our body. So we, that's part of my triad. Arginine or to increase nat nitric oxide naturally, just like Cialis is doing or Viagra is doing. And then just a good multivitamin with methylated B vitamins and um, and how you know how beneficial that is and if we need to we'll add additional DHEA as well I like to add DHEA in my guys too because that will also naturally convert to testosterone and have other benefits as well so those are additional things that I do with men for sexual health and I, I know you're on board with that and I appreciate it um, for our audience you guys Dr. Life is still practicing he's in his 80s you got to check out his videos at drlife.com at Dr life.com.